हेलो नमस्ते आई एम निखिल खड़कर अवाम वेलकम टू स्मार्ट सोल्यूशन वेर वी मोल्ड एंड स्ट्रेंथन यूथ फॉर एकेडेमिक एंड नेशनल प्रोस्पेरिटी हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू स्मार्ट सोल्यूशन टुडे वी विल बी बिगिनिंग आर फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ साइंस ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ सो वी विल बी बिगिनिंग साइंस फॉर स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ सो नाउ बिफोर बिगिनिंग विद द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ ग्रेविटी Uh, let us look into the contents of science part one. As you have got two parts of science, that is part one and part two. Uh, first, we will see what are the contents of part one. So I will just put down the list of contents before you, uh, so that it will give you an overall idea of what is the syllabus. So content for part one are. so first chapter we have is of gravity gravitation second chapter is periodic classification of elements periodic classification of elements third chapter we have chemical reactions and equations chemical reactions and equations the next that is fourth chapter is effect of electric current effect of electric current then fifth chapter we have heat sixth one is refraction of light refraction of light seventh chapter we have lenses eighth chapter eighth chapter is metallurgy the ninth chapter we have carbon compounds carbon compounds okay and the last chapter that is 10th chapter i will put down here so the 10th chapter we have is space space missions space missions okay so this is our syllabus for part 1 uh, now let us look at what are the contents of part 2 okay so now we will look into the contents of part 2 so the contents for part 2 are as follows so the first chapter we have is of uh, heredity and evolution heredity and evolution the second chapter that we have is life processes life processes in living organisms life processes in 
लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम पार्ट वन द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर वी हैव लाइफ प्रोसेसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स लाइफ प्रोसेसेस इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स and this is part 2 the next that is fourth chapter we have is of environmental management environmental management the next chapter that is chapter number 5 is towards towards green energy towards green energy the next sixth chapter is animal classification animal classification the seventh chapter we have got here is introduction to microbiology introduction to microbiology
our earth is very big and it is a very big sphere so if we look very small area it is almost flat but it is actually no, it should not be flat okay our earth is a sphere it is like a sphere so now uh, as you have observed from here that a ball thrown upwards will not continue infinitely upwards at a certain point it will have zero velocity in upward direction and then it will fall down so what this child has done here is he has applied some force on this ball okay so he has applied some force let us say that force is f and now this now this child is throwing this ball in upward direction so until this force gets to say for example here um, the acceleration due to this force say it becomes here zero which was in upward direction so it will not move upwards then okay so upward velocity or say upward acceleration here is zero now so then what will happen once it has become zero it falls down okay so from here we can understand one thing that the force that the child has applied for ball to reach this height is f but there is also some another force which is trying to pull this ball downwards because from here we have not applied any force from vertical direction as you can see so there must be some force which is trying to pull this ball downwards and that force which is trying to pull this ball downwards where towards the surface towards the surface is called as gravitational force okay so what we can say that uh, we will just uh, draw here a vertical downwards force let's say this is a force due to gravity g okay and this force is called as gravitational force gravitational force okay so have you understood what a gravitational force is so let us repeat it once again so that it is more clear to you so initially what we have done we have considered a child playing with a ball see this ball in his hand then he throws this ball upward towards the sky but and say for example the boy requires or applies a force is equals to f this f to throw this ball upwards so due to this force f the ball has reached certain height towards uh, upwards but at certain height it will reverse back its direction it will not continue infinitely towards upward does it continue going up and up and up no at some point it will reverse its direction so from here we can observe that the object whatever object it may be which is thrown towards the sky or upwards or radially outwards rather comes back on the surface to throw this ball upwards we require a force f but at this point as you can see that we have not applied any force but still the object is falling down so there must be some force which is acting on this object from a distance okay so the force which is acting on this object far from a distance which bring this ball onto the surface what is that force called as that is called as gravitational force so what is this gravitational force then so as we all know that we are on the surface of earth so let us say that we will just try to draw it in circular manner now so for example this is our earth okay and so let us say that 
the force that we have considered as Fg which is called as the gravitational force is acting radially towards the center of earth okay so what is gravitational force then so gravitational force is the force of attraction what is it the force of attraction between any object so this is our object so what is gravitational force gravitational force is the force acting between any two objects say for example our ball and over here earth okay and the earth is trying to pull this ball towards its center so this is called as the gravitational force the pull due to earth on any object which tries to bring that object on to the surface is called as force of gravity okay so let us try to draw here one um, more thing so that it is more clear to you so let us say that this is our earth surface of earth okay and this is the center of earth and say you now this is the space around the earth in all directions okay this is our earth and this is the center let us call it as c and this is say for example space or sky space or sky whatever you can call it and so say for example person standing here if he throws balls in upward direction where it will go say it will go to this height and the ball will be here but a person standing on this surface if he throws ball where it will go it will go here similarly a person standing here because this is a sphere this is not a circle this is a sphere okay so let us say that this is upwards up of sphere or down of sphere or there is no need of calling actually upward downwards okay you just consider these three points so if a person is standing at this point if he throws ball upwards or say downwards or radially outwards if he throws ball where it will go say it will go to here let us not consider that these are the same distances okay it can be anything i am just showing here for convenience and if a person is standing here and if he throws ball outwards from the surface of earth and let us say that it goes to this point then what happens every time the ball goes upwards or say radially outwards so now what we will do is we will specifically use the word radially So let us try to draw this with some another color okay so let us call this as this is the radial direction okay you understand what is radially so this is the radially outwards so let me call this as a radially outwards this is our radially outward direction okay similarly what was here here also it is radially outwards because this is the for example now if you consider this as a circle and if we draw this this is nothing but the radius and it is outwards so we will call this as a radially outward direction also now this will also be our radial outward direction and also this will be our radial outward direction okay so now let us say that you have applied some force as in this case and now say that this was the radially outward direction which it has covered so i can also show this as like this and this is my radially outward direction over here say now after covering this distance here the force is zero which is act which was acting initially vertically on this ball okay now say 
when as when the ball has reached this height now it's time for ball to return back onto the surface of earth so now what will the ball do ball will try falling downwards in the same radially inward directions now okay so now its direction will be radially inward these two lines will be actually coinciding means this was my radially outward direction if it was perfectly radially outwards means it was in say for example at a direction 90 degrees to the surface then what will the ball do ball will try returning back onto the surface on the same path which has for which it has followed for going outwards so it will return back and it will its position will be now here here also the ball will return here but this force will be acting towards the center okay so this force of radially inward will be acting now like this here also the ball which was thrown radially outward will now start moving back 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 and it will reach to this surface of earth and also in this case it will reach onto the this surface okay so now this was um, or earth okay earth so now what is happening with respect to earth it is also valid to all the planets okay so from this we can say that the force of attraction between any two objects that is here the object one is earth and object two is ball or the ability of an object to pull an another object towards its center or towards it is called as the force of gravity okay and where is that force of gravity acting it is acting towards the center of object okay so what we can say that the object the ability of earth or say planet or say object to attract other object that is ball towards it center and that ability or the force is called the force of gravity and the direction of that force of gravity is towards the center of earth that is radially inwards okay so now i think almost you have understood what the gravitational force is okay now so um, you have understood gravity and we have considered here the example of earth which is a very big planet and a ball which is a very tiny object in front of earth so do you think that if instead of earth there would they if you consider any other object the same thing applies so let us look into that so now um, if we consider any two objects say for example um, we have a moving car okay so let us say that we consider here a moving car or say for example a moving bus okay and if we have here so for example a tree which is say at some distance so now also let us say that if this is our object one So now let us say that if this is my object one, that is bus, and this is my object two, say tree. Then we can also see that this tree is trying to pull this bus towards itself in this direction, whereas this bus is trying to pull this tree. towards itself in this direction okay 
so what we can say that or let us say for example take one more example say um, this is our work so let me call this as an example number two because previously we have taken one more example and let us say the this is our example number three so let us say that this is our earth okay and this is moon earth and moon okay so as you all know that a moon revolves around the earth okay now earth and moon both are in space okay both are in space means they are just objects which are suspended in the space they do not fall or nothing nothing like that exist actually so we have earth we have moon and they are in space also there could be some far objects or say far planets like say mercury let us call this as a mercury or at a very far distance say there could be pluto as we all know it is at a very far distance so everything this all these things all these things where are they they are in space and space is infinity we do not know where this space actually ends okay so now uh, if you now look at this earth moon mercury and pluto what do you observe we can say that there is a force of attraction between any two objects in the space there exists a force of attraction between any two objects in the space okay so what we can say that earth is trying to pull this moon towards itself and the moon is trying to pull this earth towards itself okay simultaneously we can say that earth is also trying to pull this mercury towards itself earth and earth is also trying to pull this pluto towards itself okay so what we can say is that earth is trying to pull this all these are straight lines okay i am just uh, drawing it in a wrong way rather and also this mercury is earth is trying to pull this mercury towards itself okay but also now this mercury will try to pull this earth towards itself so let us draw this in that is let me call this as force due to mercury this is force due to earth this is also force due to earth this is also force due to earth this is force due to moon and now this was due to mercury now there is also a force due to due to that will try to pull this earth towards the center of this pluto okay so in this example what we have considered is that if there are any two objects in the universe this is our space also called as universe so any two objects in the universe they try to attract each other and this force of attraction is depending upon what upon its mass how much mass it has got that much more force it will try to try and apply on the next object so what is understood from here is that every object or every two objects they have a force of attraction in between them that is each one will try to pull them towards so mercury will try to pull earth towards its world earth will try to pull mercury towards its world similarly earth will try to pull this pluto towards its center and 
Pluto will try to pull Earth towards its center, but there is some balance. Okay, so this force of attraction between any two objects. the force of attraction between any two objects in the space what is it called it is called as gravitational force so what we can say is that gravitational force is the force of attraction between any two objects and acting towards the center of the object and it is universal force also one more thing that the force that is the gravitational force acts from a distance okay what does it means it acts from a distance means see the distance between earth and pluto is very long very large or say the distance between earth and moon is also very large but due to this mass it is trying to pull this moon towards the center okay and this is from a far distance so it is called as which gravitational force is a force which acts from a far distance okay so now uh, let us try to write down the definition of gravitational force now so gravitational force or you can just call it as a gravity so it's definition okay so what we have understood from this examples is that the force of attraction between any two objects so the force of attraction between any two objects in the universe is called as gravitational force gravitational force okay so the force of attraction it is attraction between any two objects as we have already seen in many cases in the universe because universe is so large and each and every object say for example if i consider this as an object one and this and as an object two then there will again be a force acting or the force of attraction on this object due to this object that is say this is my object one and this is my object two so my object one will be pulled towards object two and my object two will be pulled towards object one because of the force of attraction applied applied by object 1 on the object 2 okay so now almost uh, you have understood the definition of um, gravitational force so let us look at the properties what are the properties of gravitational force properties of gravitational force okay so the first property is that gravitational force is attractive force okay so gravitational force is attractive in nature okay and what is the second important property that 
as we have seen in all the cases that it acts towards the center it acts towards the center or you can say radially inwards let us put down this in bracket it acts towards the center or radially inwards towards the center of an object the third what we have seen is that though the object can be say for example earth and pluto then there the distance is very far but still the gravitational force exists so what does it mean it acts from a distance okay so what does it mean it acts from a distance means so let us take here an example of this so if say for example i have to move this pen in order to move this pen i have to apply a force by touching it okay so every time i have to move this pen i have to touch it means there is a physical contact but in case of gravity in order to pull the object towards itself there is no need of physical contact so we can say that it acts from a distance so, so it is a distant force today we have looked into the gravity what is gravitational force so let us stop here for the day and in the coming lecture we will see the kepler's laws of motion and uh, we will try to mathematically formulate how to write gravitational force thank you admissions are currently open for academic year 2020-21 for all further information and for your queries you can contact us on the number shown on your screen and finally i would say that to complete your education with flying colors Join Smart Solutions today. Thank you.